newly signed UFC featherweight Kai Kamaka. What's going on, man? I'm so happy for you, man, because we've been talking the last couple of years, and now you're finally going to make your walk. How are you feeling right now? Um, I feel good right now. Right now is the best I felt all week. You know, kind of everything settled in, the rush of just the UFC, whatever they got to send me in over and get fill out everything that kind of kind of died down now. So, you know, um, I mean, it happens. I, I'm a, I, you know, the fight was put together pretty late, but we're here. And so it's just another fight now. Yeah, yeah, you, you know, you were ready, though. You know, you went to Vegas after you got that win at LFA 87. You get signed. You know, just take me through the last two or three days. You know what I mean? Just how it has been for you, just rushing through everything. Uh, okay, so I'll go a little bit further back. I'll go from last week. I, if you know, I cornered, cornered Joaquin Buckley. You know, he didn't come out with the win. But I was able to help him. His his um his cornerman tested positive for COVID. You know, hope he's doing okay. Um, but, I, you know, I was here in Vegas and he... My manager texted me if I could help him out. I'm like, oh, yeah, for sure. I mean, we both fought the same night. He got his shot. I was in Vegas. I was actually going to train. I got, like, a small session in that morning. And then, so I do that whole week with him. It's very eye-opening, and it kind of prepared me for this week. But, um, yeah, yesterday was kind of crazy. I mean, Sunday I started working out harder again. Just I got, I got out the hotel, and I started going after it, like trying to get the lungs back or just, just check it, know if, you know, that I didn't rest too long. I wasn't really resting, but with a lot of with a lot of like hotel workouts, PI work, um, yeah, the PI workouts, and so I just had to check because like you know if um how I move around the body, get used to it again. But um, I was I pushed it. I pushed it Monday, Tuesday hard, and then um yeah, I got the call Tuesday. So um, but prior to me going to the UFC for cornering and stuff, I was working out hard. Um. You know, just had a little bit dings, not 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 too much, just um, little nicks, but you know, that cleared up in a few days. And then my manager just called me yesterday with the, you know, with the news. He hit me, he, he broke it to me um, during a workout, and you know, he's kind of being subtle about it, he's trying to he's trying to play it off as cool as possible. Like within like a 20 minute span, you know, he's asking me for like stuff slowly. Um, Brian Hamper and Brian Butler. They were like asking me for like um, paperwork that I, you know, and then they didn't say much. And they asked me about my ID like ten minutes later. So I'm like, oh, um, oh, did this? Did Brian Butler call? Did Butler call you yet? I'm like, no, he didn't call me. He said, oh, okay, yeah, uh, I'll just send over that. Send, send over those. Um, send over that. Uh, those medicals. I did my medicals for Vegas because I, I was hoping this is gonna come, you know. So I did my medicals and everything, and and then yeah, um. He broke the news to me like really, like, literally just finishing a workout, and it, I don't know. It, it was awesome. I was like, I mean, yeah. It, from then on, from right that moment when he said you're in the UFC to literally like right now, or like within the past like couple hours, like it's been like chaos. You know, um, just getting getting here, getting settled, quarantine. Um, not only quarantining, all the everything going on with getting up to speed with fight week. And then, so it's kind of it kind of settled down now, but you know we're here now. Brian, your manager has been with you for a while, man. It's not like you just signed with him like a month mm -hmm. ago or within even the last six months. You've been with him for years, and it's it's good to see that he saw you. He saw that in you. You know what I mean? You believe he believed yeah. in you from the start. Yeah. Well, I, Max Holloway actually helped me um, help me with that li link up with him. So. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I've just stuck by him. I had to trust trust he knows the business. And then I uh, just listen. And, you know, I mean, he he told me that when i coming out to Vegas, he like, there's no, you know, it sucks that there's no guarantee. But it's just the time that we're in, the pandemic. We live in Hawaii, so the commute is farther. So why not? You know, I was coming off a fight. So I thought, I, I think maybe, I mean, I don't know how optimistic he was about me getting it. But I was like, I was like, I, I, it's going to hit. It's going to, I feel like it's going to hit. You know, especially coming off that last win, and then so I just felt like, yeah, I was gonna, I was gonna get the win. I was gonna, I was gonna hit the lottery in Vegas. I was gonna, you know, hit the mega bucks in Vegas. Now, when people look you up, you know, what I mean, because a lot of fans they only watch the UFC, so they're gonna be exposed to you for the first time, but uh, they're only gonna see that win streak that you're on. But really, you've been through a lot of adversity throughout the years, man. And, mm -hmm. and I wanted you to break down some of the stuff that you've been through to get to this to this point, you know what I mean, of getting signed by the UFC. Yeah, I mean, it started, like, 
it started from like I had two a two fight skid with like just being hard head with um previous shoulder injuries and just fighting through them and then it happened once then the second time I fought in PXC which I thought um you know I was I was a little conf- I was I was like kind of too overconfident that I could beat this guy with my shoulder injury and I thought you know maybe I did but I lost a decision to a hometown guy tough fight and what it was it was rough it was like a it would meant it like uh, physically uh, I, I couldn't fight. I mean, there was no way I was going to fight another fight like that. But I needed that loss to let me know, like, you can't keep doing this, you know. So after that fight, I had, I had a um, whole shoulder reconstruction. And I just, I took off the whole year. And then right from that point on, I mean, the, the road didn't, like, the road wasn't, like, easy after that. But from that point on, I went on a fight, fight, ring streak. Um, but I also had two more surgeries. I had one um, on my... I had to repair my labrum on my right side, and then I had PRK eye surgery. So, and then I saw so that, was, and then after that was another year layoff. You know, after three fights, and then I had a la- torn labrum and an eye surgery, then another layoff, and then I just had these last two fights. So, let's go. I mean, it's, it's not not the ideal road, but you know, it's 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 coming together. Yeah, man, like most people, if they went through all those surgeries, they would have probably just said, man, I'm just going to go get me, uh, you know, a day job. You know what I mean? Like this is yeah. just too much wear and tear on my body, you know, you, but you did not man. You kept going and now you, you know, you're signed. And I want to go back to, you know, your cousin, Ray Cooper. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. what did he say? Have you talked to him since you got the news? Uh, yeah, I talked to him. Like we were on it pretty quick. Um we kind of moved, like, we moved on it pretty quick. Like, I wanted him to get it, because I knew that this was, I, I experienced it last week, so I wanted him to get it as soon as possible. He actually gets in tonight, um, so we could start that quarantine process, you know, and getting everything going, but he was, you know, he was just happy, he was happy for me, He, you know, and um, that's that's when the, the tears started coming, when, I mean, I, I was, in, like, in shock with my manager, you know, and, like, and I was happy, but seeing the people that, that, I've been doing this with, and then him, my wife, you know, um, the guy that I've been putting in work daily, my, my wife, she's been sticking it out this whole time with, with the injuries, you know, because that, that's, she was the one working, so with the injuries and um, working full time, she's the one supporting us, you know, and then to finally, to finally, it's a sense of relief, that's what it was, it wasn't like, it wasn't like, oh, oh yes, um, like, it's the UFC, no, it wasn't like that, it was like, like finally, you know, finally, like, cause I I feel like I'm like I'm supposed to be here. Like I mean, you gotta you gotta see yourself here, and you know, um, though, and so I mean, I was just more like relieved that it, yes, it's here now. Yeah, man, and having your uh, cousin there, man, who's been with you the whole time, grinding with you, and and you know, you you helping him out throughout the years with PFL. Now he's gonna be in your corner, man. It's big to have him there. Yeah, it is. I mean. It, it is big. I mean, we had that last fight um, in South Dakota. I was pretty cool that last South Dakota fight, um, the LFA. Like, we went there. Um, they said it was gonna have no fans, but then there was like, I mean, I guess maybe there's a like hundred people. They were like in like the, in the what do you call, like the boxes in in the arena, yeah. um, because we could hear them cheering and I'm like, that was caught me off guard. But there was pretty much no fans on the ground and to the top, and but you only could bring one corner. Um, so the whole, and then, so COVID testing, I mean, I was prepared for this week. I mean, not, not, not fully, but everything like from that, that fight, then I got to corner Buckley that kind of let me see the UFC and how things roll. And then now I'm here, you know? So, I mean, it was, and I'm not too worried about like, um, much other than just react, react on the fight because I just fought. I just fought everything's everything um you know wasn't the ideal like um picture perfect fight but nothing in like nothing in fighting is perfect you know so I mean glad I got that out of the way and that was like seven month layoff and now I get to go right into another one the biggest one you know well, on a pay-per-view card I was kind of yeah. I mean Massive. didn't really sink in until like after like oh yeah DC and Stipe is fighting yeah. this weekend yeah it's a lot of eyes on that and and, you know, like you said, you know, you just got there. You were cornering last week. This week you're going to fight. So, really, is there any time to think about the fight? Or is it just like, I'm just going to go in there and fight, man. That's it. Yeah, that's kind of, I mean, our training, 
the way we train is we prepared to do every, like be the like hardest grappling, the hardest wrestling, hardest um stand up, like prepared for the best, you know. In, in, in so, I mean, I don't, I'm not, I don't, I cannot, I cannot really think of I, even my last fight. I didn't think of my my. I mean, my coaches and then my partners they would let me know on what things to watch out for, but I didn't really watch film already. Um, just because like that was on four week notice, and then this fight's on what. Um, five day notice, four four day notice. So, I mean, and this, I mean, and then fighting. I mean, w- once once fatigue sets in, fighting is fighting. You know, it's the same. Yeah, um, the yeah, the technique goes a little bit. It, you know, goes a little bit down. Um, so I mean, it, it, to me, it's just it's just another fight. It's just the hardest hardest uh like another grind, hard day at at work. Does your mentality change? A little bit heading into the UFC debut, or is it the same as always? Um, I don't know. I mean, it hasn't changed yet. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, it hasn't changed. Like, I'm not, I don't maybe because it's the pandemic. I'm not fighting in front of twenty thousand people or whatnot. I'm fighting in front of less people, and I just did that, you know. But to me, I feel like it's not LFA. It's, it's just UFC, and it's just a guy, you know. That's all it is. It's just I'm fighting. I'm fighting him. He's fighting me. That's it. I'm mean, so. I mean, I try not to think about it any any way other way, because you know, and you, then you start start rambling in your head, and, you know. So I, I'm the mindset really hasn't changed other than other than I just just go just fight. Maybe that's the perfect storm for you right now, man. Is to yeah. not have that eight weeks of thinking about what's going to happen in your debut. Yeah. It's just like go in there and throw them hands. That's it. Yeah, I mean, I just came off a hard, hard camp because I was preparing to be in Vegas before I even took the LFA fight. Then the LFA fight came, so I was already training like at four week, four weeks out. Then, then I took that fight, and then so I was all the while I was preparing to be here. You know, I mean, maybe not that I was actually preparing for to be here in this situation rather than the last situation first. And then that one came, and then I took that one, and then I was like, oh yeah, I'm gonna just stop in Vegas, and then see what happens you know and it only took a week and a half uh, uh, yeah maybe a week and a half because i got here i got here saturday after my fight and then it was only what that's only a week and a half after so it actually worked out yeah yeah it, well i've seen a couple other guys that have done the same exact thing as you they're in vegas yeah. they're training and they're just waiting for their opportunity and and yeah man you got to make your opportunities nowadays it's not like it's going to happen to you out of nowhere so it's great to see that you know you're pr- you're proof of that now one last thing is uh you know you're fighting at featherweight do you plan on going back down to bantamweight maybe later on or even after this fight <laughs> shoot if you can find some way to shrink these legs i mean um uh, no because the i mean i don't know i mean <laughs> when the money's right and you know when i got a n- nutritionist dietitian sitting right next to me the whole time but Maybe it's in, then maybe it'd be worth it, but no, not really. Uh, at 35, 35, I'm training to eat, and then at 45, I'm eating to I can train. You know what I mean? Like I'm fueling up for for my for my workouts, for my training, and I've grown into I've grown into it. I I'm like I'm not small for 45 at all, but I'm all and but I'm also like really big for 35. You know. So I mean, maybe not height wise, but my legs don't shrink with whatever weight I go. So like, only my top half gets smaller, and then it just balloons back up at 35. And I just feel like, I, um, yeah, I don't, I don't like life. I like life, not not as much <laughs> at 35. It's, it's just a lot lot less enjoyable. I need at least like, like, I'll make the weight at six weeks, eight weeks, or because I I just I'll make weight. If I say I'll make weight, I'll make weight, but. But my my training was just tailored to making weight. You know, my sparring sessions, my my workouts, my li- my my lifts, everything. Even even I could say even like just running was like I couldn't I couldn't run hard every time. I couldn't um, you know, waking up was lit, I mean felt a little more groggy more often. So I mean, I don't know if somebody can help me get it right. I don't know if I'm, I don't think I'm doing anything wrong with my eating because I eat pretty like pretty well, pretty healthy. But I just feel like. Well, 35 is a lot. It's it's rough. Like I've made weight every single time, but it's just not worth it. Like I gotta do so much just to stay down there. And then, 
I wouldn't be able to be in this situation if I was taking a fight at 35, you know? Like, I I walk around like 68, 60, yeah, 68. Um, so, and that's, 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 that's like watching what I eat. Like I can, or like, um, I can get up to like, I mean, eating all that local Hawaiian food. I can get up to, I mean, you're Asian, you, the rice is in, rice is in the diet. You know what I mean? Like I could be like 72, 73 and um yeah and and work out and still be still be that weight so um 35 i don't know it's rough i it like scares me thinking about it sometimes <laughs> well maybe you you know like when you did fight at 35 it was like when you were young you were younger you're still young but you were younger and yeah. now you kind of have your man body like you've grown into but, your body yeah yeah well i know words. like i noticed like like even even holding guys down at 35 is much harder than for at, at 45 <laughs> Like, or, and the long, like, the the longer the fight went on, at 35, like, it felt a lot scarier than 45, like, like, just, like, body shots, like, it weren't the worst body shots, but I felt, the, I felt them way more than that, at thir- at 45, I mean, at, than at 45, you know, just the impact of things, even sparring, like, I'd get hit, and I wouldn't, I wouldn't, like, like, get knocked down or anything, but, like, my, like, I just couldn't, I didn't have that ground to, like, stick in, punch, like, um, uh, you know, take punches as easy. So, well, that's good to hear, man, that, that you're taking the healthy approach, to be honest with you, because a lot of guys, they're stubborn. And they're like, yeah. no, I need to get down to the lower weight class because I want the advantage of the size and everything. But it's good that you're you're taking the healthy approach heading into your UFC debut. Man, good luck to you, man. UFC 252 is a massive card. And it's going to be fun to see you in that octagon, man. I've, I've been looking forward to this for a while. Yeah, I mean... Long time coming. I mean, I've had a weird road, and you know, not not the smoothest at all by any means. But shoot, this was this was bound to happen sooner or later, you know. So I mean, I'm I'm seven and two, but like in my mind, I should have been um, nine and all. I I don't think I should have lost those two fights, and I'm not I'm not just like talking myself up. I I was winning those fights, and like so it's it's hard to I I I, I never felt like I ever like. Like I'm not like the perfect guy by any a perfect fighter by any means, but like those fights that I did lose, like they were a lot easier like when during those times like in the fight than some of my other fights, um, um for the time being until I got hurt until I you know I went in there my my old injury like haunted me, so it's like kind of like I left those fights not even thinking I lost so. It's not that it's not that I'm oh I'm nine I I should be nine and all but it's like no I I didn't think I would completely I didn't get beat you know mm. so it's different. 